Hi guys, welcome back. And in this video, we'll see how we can start working with Cypress tests itself. So the first thing that we have did in our last video was installation of Cypress. And we saw how that all installation is gonna boil down by installing Node.js and Cypress app. And then finally, this window that you are seeing over here, the Cypress app really comes in. But right now, we'll see how we can add tests to the Cypress folder itself. And again, as we saw in our earlier lecture, there happened to have this command.js, e2e.js, and cypress.config.js, which automatically came in. Now we are going to see how we can automatically bring in some scaffolding test code as well using this Cypress app itself. So the good thing about this Cypress app is once you click this start e2e testing in Edge browser, as you can see over here, it is going to give you two options. One is the scaffold example specs and create new spec. So the scaffold example specs are the example specs or the specification test codes, which is written by the Cypress team itself, which is gonna help you get started with Cypress in much, much faster fashion. So if you go click this scaffold example spec, and you will notice that it is gonna show you all the different test files, which is gonna be created once you click this okay i got it thingy and you will notice that these tests are going to be sitting under the cypress folder and there is this end-to-end -end test folder that's where all these tests are going to be sitting so once i go and click this okay i got it right now and you will notice that there are all these tests listed under the e2e specs as you can see over here there is also something like component specs which is going to be for the component testing which we have not reached the point yet so we will not be discussing about component testing yet but you will notice that there is this end-to-end -end specs, which is gonna be all the tests sitting. And guess what? All these tests are gonna be even sitting within our Visual Studio code as well. So if you just see, there is this new folder called as E2E, and this folder is gonna hold this E2E's getting started, and there is this advanced example. So, so all these structures that you are seeing over here are pretty much exactly the same structure as you can see. See, one getting started to do, and to advanced example and all these examples comes in. So let's try to ex execute one of the examples as we have over here. The getting started itself is a great place to go with. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And once I click it, you will notice that it is gonna open up some test execution over there. And you will notice that the specs are actually running automatically. And this are all happening because of Cypress test execution, really. So you'll notice that this test has got some steps over here, and these steps are executing based on the test which is being written there. And the good thing about these tests are, you will notice that it shows you like display to to do items in by default. So once I go over there, it is gonna show you uh, to do items like pay electric bill and walk the dog. So this is the first thing which it happened in the before each. And there's this test body, which is gonna choose like all the test body in here. And then it is doing some operation there. It is gonna click or assert whether the first element exists or not. And then it is going through the second element and if it exists or not. So there are two assertions. Basically there are three assertions happening over here. So it has validated all these operations. And there is another test, which is gonna be can add a new to-do item. So I assume that this test is gonna add some items to this to-do list itself. So it's gonna go and visit once again, the same example.cypress.io.todo page. And then it is gonna go enter some detail there. As you can see, it has entered feed the cat. And once it has entered it, you see that there is an enter in the curly braces there, which means it is hitting the enter key from the keyboard. And then it is looking for the items to have a length of three, which means there is a new item being added. That's been asserted as well. That's all coming up. So you'll notice that even after the test execution is fully complete, we could just navigate back to the times and see what's really happening behind the scene to the test execution. Now this feature is called as time travel feature of Cypress. And again, Cypress is very proud to announce this feature as the first tool to have this feature because there was no such tool while they introduced initially to have this time travel feature. But now guess what? Playwright actually has this same exact functionality. Uh, I mean, that's how it is right now, but this is quite awesome. So all these code that you are seeing over here, like the steps that you are seeing over here can be visualized as code. If you just navigate over there, see that open in IDE, there is an option comes in. So if you go and click that open in IDE, and then it's gonna ask you 
which IDE that you would like to use as an editor of your choice. And I'm going to choose Visual Studio Code without any hesitation because that's the one which I recommended to you as well before. I'm going to hit save changes and you'll notice that it is going to open the code straight away over here in our Visual Studio Code. And guess what? These are all the same exact code which are being executed behind the scene in the Cypress app for us over here. And this is the same test. Like before each is the hook, which is like a fixture. I mean, other test frameworks, they call it as hooks and some tool they call it as fixture, but this is fixture really. Uh, and these are all some stuffs going on there. Like I'm not really gonna get deep into that yet, but you will notice that within this describe block, there is this before each block and this before each block is performing a visit of the website. And there is a it block which does some operation over there and this is exactly the one which we actually saw over here so these are all things which are happening and then you can also see there are other tests as well and these are all working fine for us without any problem so that is exactly what we are going to be discussing in our upcoming videos of this course because you will notice that there are so many things going on over here but the whole idea is now that you got the idea like how the test execution happens so if we go back to the spec again and let's say if you want to execute the other test the action.sci.js that's going to execute as well for you over here you see that it's all just works pretty fine and these are the tests which are written by the cypress team itself which is going to help you give more context of how you can use various different different functionalities in cypress like type operation for example focus blur clear submit click double click right click check uncheck select scroll in view trigger and scroll to so these are the things which we do in the dom element most of the time i mean you can get all the examples within this code if you just go and hit the open editor um, ide and you'll notice that all the examples are given for you over here so this way you get more idea of how cypress really handles those ui operation behind the scene and you can learn all those details in much much easier fashion and i think this is the first getting started place for you to learn cypress if you have not worked before and if you have a bit of prior knowledge with other automation testing tool like selenium for example then you know what these things are because in selenium the only thing that we do is interacting with the ui element but the assertion is going to be taken care of by other testing tool it could be some assertion libraries like for example if you're using c sharp it's going to be n unit if it is java then it's going to be j unit or test ng something like that and over here in cypress you don't really have to install a separate testing library because it's all baked in the cypress itself so it has its own inbuilt test library like the one that you are seeing over here the describe and the it and the before each all these things are like mocha style so mocha is a testing library in javascript world which is already baked in cypress already so you could just use those things and you'll also notice that all the assertions operations as well as the code organization operations you can take right away out of the box with cypress without needing to install any third party tool that is the other great thing about cypress itself and that's the reason why everything is sitting over here well, as I said, I have given you the context, like how all these things are working right now. Probably you got the idea how everything is working behind the scene. Starting our next lecture, we'll see how we can start writing a simple code in Cypress. And we also discuss how that we can leverage the power of all these testing libraries, which Cypress has offered to us out of the box by using its great power of fixtures as well as the assertion libraries and how everything is working together without any problem out of the box in cyprus we're going to do all these things starting our next lecture but for now that's what it is and i hope you can just play around by yourself until this point thank you